So when we look at the work of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, it can be compared to the surah of the Holy Quran entitled The Star. The star. The star is that which is in the heavens, is that right? And the star is that which is used by those who are traveling to be guided by, is that right? The ships on the sea and those who navigate in the skies can navigate by the brilliance of the star. Jesus was recognized and known as that bright and morning star. Is that right? Yes, sir. So if Jesus is that one who heralds in God's coming, then we must look at that one and recognize who that star is because it relates to a man. Now the Quran says that that star has no equal. There was one time when the animal Louis Farrakhan had a uniform made and he had the crescent and the star on his lapels and the animal Elijah Muhammad told him to take the moon off. Why? Because the moon represents equality. And he said, brother, you have no equal. So we are looking at a man who is brilliant in the heavens, who is enough to, for us to guide our lives by, and who is doing the work of Jesus to resurrect a dead people. So brothers and sisters, I'm not going to take up any more time. I'm going to bring before you a Western regional representative, a man who really needs no introduction. His work precedes him. Please receive the Western Regional Representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, Brother Minister Tony Muhammad. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for appearing among us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the God who was to come and who indeed has come. A God, as the Bible say, he would come in the last day seeking to find a people who is lost. We can find no other people more lost than the black man and woman here in the hills of North America, and God knows we need a God that will come and lift a broken people. God in the Bible said that he would come in sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. He would come and get next to these people, and he would be as the book has described him to be, as a thief in the night. So among us, he would search us out and he would find one from among us and that one was a Georgia born black man by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he would raise him to be the Christ who would in this day crush the wicked of the people who had brought us into slavery and put us in a terrible condition. Right. So he has raised one from among us like unto Moses. The honorable Elijah Muhammad is like unto Moses, and in the absence of Moses, he has given to us a champion, a black man, that the whole world now is calling for the presence of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, who, in my humble opinion, he is the boldest, he is the brightest. Right. He is the most courageous right. of all of those defense attorney who have been born to defend the black man and woman and then all the oppressed people the world over. Right. In their holy and righteous names, I greet you all. In the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Right. Brothers and sisters, we certainly want to welcome you all here, those who will be watching via television. We now are making history at Mars 27 that now this particular production, God willing, will air this Thursday on channel 39 that this is the first of a television series where we 
will go in defense. And we, with the help of Allah, will build an apologia, not apology, an apologia in defense of three mighty great men. One, Master Farad Muhammad, all praises be to Allah. Number two, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is the exalted Christ. And number three, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a witness of those two. All praises due to Allah. So, Reverend Bryce, here we are. It is now time for you to stop shadow boxing. All praises due to Allah. Now, Brothers and sisters, our way is peace. Is that right? Yes, sir. This is not a television series to cause anger in the community. For the Honorable Louis Farrakhan have said that Brother Dr. Reverend Price is a brilliant brother. Yes, sir. And this should be as we are leaving a century of war and bloodshed. We should now embark upon a century of peace and dialogue. Because it would be beautiful to see the Reverend Prices of the world and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan's of the world and the Jesse Jackson's of the world and other uh, Islamic imams. It's time for us to come together. But if you cast an excursion against our teaching, then it is time that you cast your rod and we cast our rod, and let's see who rod swallows up who rod. Is that right? We have visiting with us today one of the foremost scholars in the nation of Islam, and in my opinion, anywhere to be found in the world. She is a woman, and she happens to be the wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. She is our mother, the mother of the faithful, and she can defend her husband and Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. And so she's here with us today to begin this series. So brothers and sisters, and to our Christian brothers and sisters in the community, we do not teach against the teachings of Jesus Christ. But we will teach against those white theologians who have added to Jesus Christ lies and deceptions. So we will come in an apologia to begin to defend the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as it is given to him by that one who it is written of, Master Farad Muhammad. This series and this hour that you will be witnessing on TV will be called The Truth Hour. It is The Truth Hour where we, the nation of Islam, we believe that we know God came in the person of a man. And it can be proven in the Bible. The problem with most of our Christian brothers and sisters is you go by your Bible too much. You got to stop walking by the book and God willing, we will take you in the book today. And it won't be thus said, Minister Farrakhan, but let's go into the Bible and let's go into the Quran and let's begin to build a defense so now Muslims and Christians, we can unite today. So this is not no anti-Christian lecture, no. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said it a good Muslim is a good Christian, and a good Christian is a good Muslim, because we believe in the teachings of Jesus. In fact, as Muslims, we believe that we have been crystallized into the oneness of Jesus by following his example, so therefore, we are Christians too. We are Hebrews. A Hebrew is one who was once in the darkness, but have come into the truth of the light. And therefore, we have crossed out of lies into truth, so therefore, we are Hebrew. We are also Catholic. Catholic are people who are universal, meaning whatever they say to one in truth, they will say to all in truth. So we are Catholics. We are Methodists, meaning we take the methods and means and ways of Jesus and we apply it to 1999. And we go after the lame, we go after the blind, we go after the deaf. Is that right? So we are Methodists too. 
and Reverend Price, we are Baptists. Because when we was brought to America, we was robbed of our father's name. So now we are being baptized into the truth of our father. So now we know who our father is. So we're being dipped into the name of the father. And we're going into the name of his son. That son being Elijah Muhammad. And the spirit, his spirit is the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And so we are baptized today. And so therefore we are Baptists. It is time that the Christian preachers, the Imams, and the ministers of the nation of Islam, it is time that we stop the religious gangbanging. That's right. How can we tell the Bloods and Crips to stop gang banging on a street level and we religious gang bang in the name of Muhammad, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Moses? Stop the gang banging because if Jesus was here, if Muhammad was here, if Moses was here, and if Jesus was, they would all be together in unity. It is man who has divided the flock. So, brothers and sisters, we are truly humble that Mother Tynetta is with us today. But we want the community to know she will be bringing a report uh, as to the status of the health of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. Don't believe the hype. Yes, sir. I mean, the media makes it appears as if Farrakhan is on his deathbed. Yes, but he is not on his deathbed, and Mother Tynetta will bring that to us. So this is the first of eight series, Reverend Price. And we have written, Reverend Price, several letters. I have made probably more than 50 phone calls, and we have not gotten a return call. But this is our exact science and theology. So with us today is our dear mother, and she is approaching the rostrum. Let's give a hand to our dear mother, Mother Tanetta Muhammad, the wife of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. She's with us today. Thank you, Mother Tanetta. All praise is due to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That only means God is the greatest. All praise is due to Allah. So, brothers and sisters, and to our TV listening audience, we want to welcome you to hear from the mother of the faithful. In our opinion, she is one of the foremost scholars in Quran, and she knows the Bible. And she can defend three men, Master Farad Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and their witness. So will you please help me in welcoming the mother of the faithful, our mother, Sister Tanetta Muhammad. Bring her on with a round of applause. Right. Assalamu alaikum. Please be seated. In the most holy name of Allah, the all-wise, true, and living God, to whom all praise is due forever, we can never, never, ever thank Allah for his coming and revealing himself in the reality of a human being. The reality of God in man is the greatest teaching that we received here in the wilderness of North America and the teaching that is so controversial that we are called outside of religion, yes. outside of Islam, yes. outside of Christianity or Judaism. But to understand the reality of God in person is the teaching that Christ brought 2,000 years ago when his disciples asked him to tell them what the kingdom or when the kingdom of God would begin. And he looked at them and they were amazed at the answer. They said, the kingdom of God begins in you. That was the key which brought forth the birth 
of Master Farad Muhammad, oh, hey. the great Mahdi born in 1877 in the holy city of Mecca. Yeah. And when he came to America, the searchlight for the righteous was lit to find one among us who would believe and recognize the reality of God and man, and that one was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. If he had not recognized the brightness of the coming of that Holy One, we would not be here today. That's right. So we forever thank Almighty God Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes. And we thank Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for the righteous servant that is in our midst, who is taking us one step beyond in understanding the reality of God. And that great one is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. So I greet you again, and I had to dwell on that, because if we don't understand those three men, That's right. we don't have a chance to pass our examination in the classroom of Almighty God Allah. The reality of God in man is the main teaching of the members of the nation of Islam. Yeah. When you come into the nation of Islam, you're not just coming to learn Islam, Christianity, Judaism, and all the other religions. You come in to learn a thorough knowledge of yourself. Well, that's right. And the thorough knowledge of yourself takes you to the root of the creation of God himself. Gee. All right. I really came here today to speak to you about a subject that the world is now clamoring about. When the name Louis Farrakhan is mentioned, it's like in the Holy Quran, where it says they put up a big clamor. Yeah. Just one little word, one little rumor about what is happening with that man doesn't just come out in your local newspapers That's right. or on the local radio stations or television spots That's right. or the grocery store newspaper. Anything about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan fans flames and fire all around the world. That's right. So we want to know why. What is producing this effect? It is because he represents the two most powerful men that have ever been born right. on this planet for not just thousands of years, but for trillions of years. Yeah. There has never been the like of Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, there has never been, and you can tell me if this is true, there has never been a man that has been so studied and scrutinized from the inside out as Minister Farrakhan. That's right. There has never been anyone who has exposed details of his medical record and his medical condition as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Is that true? That's right. Even with the departure of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it was covered over the details. So in the so-called death record at the hospital, it stated that he died of congestive heart failure. Okay? So what is this all about? Why is the propaganda and the media going so far over in suggesting not only illness of a man, but interjecting all kinds of inner conspiracies that we have never ever talked about? Gee. That means that we have now to study the anatomy of hypocrisy and the end result. I hope in these few moments that I have with you this afternoon that I can lay a scientific and mathematical base 
for the present controversy and propaganda media blitz surrounding Minister Farrakhan. From these three sources, from the Holy Quran, from the Bible, and from the supreme wisdom teachings yeah. of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, we are like no other people on the planet. Right. No people on the planet have the witness to the presence and reality of God as you and I. That's right. But we are so far behind. We have become so slovenly, niggardly, lazy, ungrateful, that we don't even recognize the value of what has been given to us. So we continue to sit down and buy in to the propaganda. That's right. Okay? Because we're not doing our own study and we're not doing our own research. This study, this propaganda is not about a man named Farrakhan who is deathly ill, who's on his deathbed, who is walking in the shadows of death. This is the work of Satan That's right. That's right. in high places That's right. that knows how to insert his satanic agents in among us under all kinds of disguises. Yes, ma'am. Maybe some of them are here this afternoon. They're here. Maybe some of them are from the mosque. That's right. Maybe some of them are from the church. That's wrong. This is not an impossibility. This is a reality. Yes, what do we do about it? We describe the characteristics right. of their hypocrisy. We reveal it and we bring it out into view just like we're studying the cell's mutation and degeneration in the human body. The master has the ability, I have to say it in front before I get into the details, the master who came Master Farad Muhammad, yes. the great Mehdi, yes, came with an arsenal of weapons to defeat Satan yes. and his entire world. That's right. He has the ability, brothers and sisters, to take dead cells yes. and reverse the aging process yes. and bring about a miracle yes. in our midst. Yes. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad came all the way down in sickness, entering into the hospital, pronounced dead. But yet we claim that the master who came has the ability to reverse the aging process and deal with decayed cells. Do we believe that? Yes, sir. All right. So now, Honorable Minister Farrakhan, in his 44th year, yes. the same year, 44th year, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yes. was taken from us. I said I wanted to lay a scientific yes, and a mathematical base to our studies because all that we are made up of is mathematics. That's right. Every beat of our heart is timed to a rhythm in harmony with not just your body, but the earth and the universe. So the master has the ability to reverse the dead, dying cells. How does this affect the Honorable Minister Farrakhan? There is evidence right now, as we speak, that regardless to the propaganda blitz, whether it's a death plot, poisoning, whatever may have entered into the body of our beloved minister, that there is a regeneration of those dead and dying cells. I don't have the moment or time to bring that evidence to you at this moment. Yes. But in a very short period of time, we may be able to bring that evidence to you about what's going on inside of the body of Minister Farrakhan. Yes, ma'am. This study is to show us the reality of God. Yes. That he did come 
that he is present and that he is working on his servant and going to show forth his power. And perform a miraculous thing that the world will say. Right. He has overcome death. That's right. That's right. So when that article came out in the Village Voice, which I have a copy of it, I don't know how many of you here read it. Yes. Look how sinister the article reads. In picture with the honorable minister in the shadow of death. Well, we all walk in the shadow of death <laughs> in this world. And then captivating, like uh, one of those, um, I want to call it a soap opera newspaper, a mystery virus triggers rumors of a murder plot. Uh. Now, who said that he had a mysterious virus? This is the first time I heard about it. It's the first time you heard about it, right? If it is a mysterious virus, how far back can we check? the record on their experimentation on viruses. HIV? Legionnaire's disease? Skin-eating viruses? When did all of this rage of viruses suddenly come to our attention with people dying like flies here and there? Yeah. Mad cow disease. Yeah. Yeah. Who's experimenting with what? Come on, and why are they keeping it a secret? Come on, because Satan knows as he goes out, his world goes out. Right. He wants to take us out with him. Yes. So don't believe the hype. Yes. Let us study Jeez. the scientific and the mathematical proof of what is going on. Let's get up under the nerve of Satan. Let's expose him. Root and branch. Not of ourselves, but through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to speak the truth today. Because that's what Dracula needs to die. We have to put the mirror and put the light and take him out. Only when we get up under Satan will we be free and liberated. Free from fear. Don't be afraid, even if you have to die. If I had to die for telling the truth, we're already dead enough already. Then it goes on to say, triggers rumors of a murder plot against the cancer-stricken Louis Farrakhan. And talk of a power struggle inside his nation of Islam. I mean, that is really technology, isn't it? And then he has the nerve to put his name there by Peter Noel. I won't go into the whole article, but it's enough for you and I to know that he can't put that small time talk over on us today. He can't fool a Muslim, not nowadays, right? And if we understand what a Muslim is, it is all of the 40, 44 million black people in America. It's not just the new converts who walk into this mosque. This is a small fraction. Because a Muslim is a righteous person. You can be a Christian Muslim, or a Jewish Muslim, or a Buddhist Muslim. It does not matter where you come from, because to be a Muslim means to have the essence of Almighty God Allah in the nature of your very creation.
So this controversy is not about his nation of Islam. That's such an insult. Yeah. He has no nation. That's right. But Allah has claimed us yeah, right. as his nation yeah. and as his people yeah. to put us on the top where we were the tail. Yeah. He wants to teach us a profound, deep, rooted wisdom right. of God himself. And everyone now that doesn't like this is just angry, yes. jealous, envious, yes. because he didn't come to them. Yes. He came to us, yes. the rejected and the despised. Mr. Farrakhan yes. is resting and taking his four month sabbatical. Yes, right. Why is Allah removing the honorable Minister Farrakhan for an instance from our midst? Because the angels are recording our works. We can't get into heaven on silvery wings. We can't get into heaven because we preach the word so good. That is nothing. Lip service is nothing. You got to stand up and work. We have to do something for ourselves. Yes, right. Why is Allah removing the Honorable Minister Farrakhan for an instance from our midst? Because the angels are recording our works. We can't get into heaven on silvery wings. We can't get into heaven because we preach the word so good. That is nothing. Lip service is nothing. You got to stand up and work. We have to do something for ourselves. We can't sit down anymore and take all of this. I want to say the word, but we cannot take. And it's so sad, brothers and sisters, that a man that worked as hard as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that he has to actually come to a crisis. This physical crisis is due to the labor of trying to resurrect a rebellious people. So as we are studying certain aspects of his own physical weakness and breakdown, that is symptomatic of our condition. We have contributed to the suffering and to the physical ailments of our brother. And I'm going to take us one step further. First, with the Holy Quran. I chose as the subject to describe what is going on, the anatomy of, of hypocrisy and the end result. This year, came in so strong with signs of this controversy concerning the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. Suggestions of poisoning or death plot or the controversy over power struggle. I want to ask this question. What kind of power struggle do we look like pointing to anybody as a potential successor? The only successor, I'm going to make it very clear, the only successor who could come behind Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is God himself. We know how far behind we are. We know what we haven't done, what we need to do. We are getting ready, brothers and sisters, to enter into a phase of development in our nation, which will require all of us to go to school, to get further training, education, to qualify ourselves for examination in God's classroom. 
It may include the universities and the colleges. That's one level. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that scientists, teachers from our own original nation are going to be teaching us everything about the mechanics, not just of building on this planet, but the mechanics of building according to the universe. Now that's very heavy, isn't it? You just have to take a look at some of our past history very quickly, and you'll understand what I mean. Yes, the great monuments in Egypt, the pyramids and the temples that they're discovering all over Mexico, the temples and the pyramids that they're discovering in China, off the, off the um, shores of Okinawa, in Japan, did you know this? They're discovering landmarks of our ancient forefathers that they build according to a mathematical grid system all over the planet aligned to the planets, aligned to the stars. And that's the kind of knowledge that we are about to enter into. That we will eclipse the Great Pyramid. We will eclipse the Pyramid Temple building in Mexico. We will eclipse any kind of new discovery about any scientific or architectural genius because we will be taught a superior knowledge of the universe itself and not just about the one we're in. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that one day one would be born among us. He was giving us our future history who will make a new son because the sun we're using is gradually losing its power and its fuel. How do you get a sign of that? It's having these sunspot eruptions. And in these sunspot eruptions, their eruptions go out and create electromagnetic movement into the sphere of our universe that affect the life on this planet. Everything now has become contaminated, right? right? Our food, our vegetables, our water, our right. fruit. Is that right? right? But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us how to detox, didn't he? Right. How did he teach us to detox? Fasting. Right. Eat once a day. Right. Eat once every two days. Eat once every three days and as long as you can. He said that's how you live a long life because every food has some kind of poison in it. We, can, we are poisoning our systems now by the kind of food and drink that we are putting into our bodies. So we have to give the body rest in between the intake of our liquids and also of our food. This is one of the things that we are going to have to study very, very deeply in order to prolong our life. Because as long as Satan is here tinking and tampering with our food, putting hormones in the meats, injecting some kind of artificial tomato, I don't know, and every other vegetable and fruit, our lives are definitely in danger. So I want to congratulate, by the way, at this moment, our brother, Minister Tony Muhammad, who following the teachings and guidelines of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is creating a safe, haven and a place of refuge with one of the fundamental, the fundamental uh, item that will keep our life going, food, and at a price that you cannot beat. We should have all the churches throughout just lining up in buses to take this back to their parishes and to their congregations. But I want to go on and complete this as quickly as possible. Hypocrisy. What Satan has designed. But what he has done, brothers and sisters, in his wickedness, in his thoughts of wickedness, he is actually making our job easier. That's right. He is now calling out those who have been sympathetic to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Is that right? And through his representative. We have had the most stupendous outpouring of calls and, and oh, and their sorrow over the condition 
of our minister because they realize that if we lose this man, there's nothing left but hell. Divine chastisement. Because the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has so much love in his heart that he knows how to bring about harmony in diver di how do you call diversity. He knows how to take people who are at odds and defend them and bring them into accord as a family. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a wonderful friend. He has no selfish agenda. He is the man of God. And there's nobody like Minister Louis Farrakhan anywhere on this planet. I believe that Almighty God Allah is calling upon us to improve our life so that he can heal. The better we act, the faster the healing. The sooner we stop gossiping about each other. He's such a sensitive man, he can pick up anything that we're talking about if he cares to, because Allah can reveal it to him. So if we cannot be in harmony, this affects the body. We are all a part of our environment. Thoughts are things. So as you think, so are you. So let us concentrate and be with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for the completion of his healing. And each and every one of us has that power. And I thank the churches, and I thank Reverend Price, and I thank all of the wonderful pastors who have opened up prayers for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. When they speak, the theologians I'm talking about, the pastors, the reverends, they really, I don't mean to say it to hurt anybody's feeling, they're really just children. They are children who have been prepared by licensing from a people that brought our foreparents into slavery. Okay? So Almighty God, Allah had to find a way to get in and up under Satan's world and extract us like the operation on a nation to take us out of their control and bring us into our own separate living room, our own separate school room, our own separate mosque, okay? Not because we're racist, no. How could we be racist when we were in love with the white man and let him do everything he wanted? You love the devil because he gives you nothing. That's what we're told. And that's exactly what he's given us, nothing. I would like to see us in groups go and visit the churches and invite the churches to come and visit with us. Yes. Not just individual members, but create a dialogue right. that will be so powerful that Satan will have to let us go. Right. Because our unity will destroy Satan's divisiveness. Right. He can only rule as long as we stay disunited. Yes. Yes. When we come together, knowing that we're brothers and sisters, whether we're Christian or Muslims or Hebrews or whatever, that, that title doesn't mean anything. That name doesn't mean anything. Look into the essence of your being. Be a brother to a brother. Be a sister to a sister. Because if we begin to treat each other with respect, with love, with the brotherhood of man, universal principles, you will become a giant, a giant because God then will start turning on the light inside your house. That means your body, your mind, and give you the gifts of the visionary, give you the gifts of prophecy, give you the gifts to bring in a new thought, a new idea, to create something new, to help us to get up out of Satan's world to improve the lifestyle in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and in our homes. This is why Islam came 
Islam didn't really come just to set up a religion. Do you, you know what I mean? It came to establish a whole new world order based on peace, freedom, justice, and equality for everyone. Yeah. We know that this is 1999, right? Yes, There's so many nines there, it's frightening. No. Yes, but if you take all of those nines and study them very carefully, adding them up all straight across, you come to this number that everybody is wondering about, 19. Yeah. So what is it about 19? Why is it that Y2K crises cannot compute yeah. the dates in the 21st century? That's right. Why is it that the failure of the memory in the two digits process of the computer world will take us back to the beginning of this century. The number 19 that appears in the Quran says that over it, that means the hell it says, is the number 19. What happened in this century that we have to review? It was the worst, the most violent century in the history of the world. Two world wars plus other world wars all in Asia, all in the Polynesia area, in the Pacific, in Latin America, in Europe. Is that right? That's right. And we have so many problems that you can't even keep up with them. Right. So many unleashed viruses and illnesses that everything is just out of control. Right. Out of control. Now, this number 19, I want to make it as clear as I possibly can. The work of this number is separating the people yeah. into three main groups. Believers, disbelievers, and hypocrites. Whenever you hear the number 19, even, this is really going to be interesting for me to say this, but even a dress called 19 is controversial. Mm, that's right. But, this number 19 says that it would divide the people up into three groups. And in the division or dividing up of these three groups, one of these groups is to be taken away, taken out. How that is to be done, um, I cannot describe it to you right now, but these are teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that there would be a first vanguard elite group that would be taken out from the midst of hell and they would be taken this is a blessing they would be taken to meet with him because we believe that he lives that he is not dead now i know that this is a kind of strange talk but why are we looking at Minister Louis Farrakhan as they quote, quote from the scripture, dying at death's door? And I even heard some reports said that he was dead. Is that true? Yeah. And why are we taking this subject seemingly, you know, with a very um, strong, positive view? Because the last thing to conquer, brothers and sisters, according to the scripture, was death. Is that right? So now we got to look at it right in our face. Right. What is this thing called death? What is this thing called dying? Is it real or is it illusionary? Is there something one step beyond that we don't know about? I know the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said there's no life after you pronounce death, right? You cannot take your physical body put it in the ground, and expect that that physical body is going to come back again. That's the wrong way to see it. But if you have a strong mind, that mind working to its optimum, okay, can recreate the body that connects to the head. Did you hear me? 
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in our lessons that there is a chance for the what? The mental dead. All right? And the mental dead has progression of evolution, right? We're not even using a third or a quarter of our brain cells, right? So that means that we have some dead brain cells that have never been put into operation, never been working. So what if those dead brain cells started working? What might be the possibility of longevity of life and immortality and the conquering of death? So that when you reach that stage of evolution, you can will yourself to die when you want to die. And you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us all of those secrets. He said that the master came and pointed out to us the longevity of the life of the people on Mars. So just look at what science is doing and think back what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us years and years ago, before they started their exploration into outer space. So if longevity of life is based for the average Martian, 1,200 years, then we're looking at something that apparently we lost that we have to regain. And now their scientists are getting very bold about this, aren't they? Now they're saying things that if we said them to you, you will make mockery of us. Oh boy, they had one of those spooky lectures today. Sister, mother, sister Tanera Mohammed loves to take us out into outer space. I know, I know she's tuned up with the, <laughs> with the mother's wheel. <laughs> you should be happy if I did that. <laughs> but he gave us, brothers and sisters, a teaching so profound. And let us not let the, the, the Satan in our midst keep us off of these powerful teachings. Because the more, I, let me put it this way, the stronger that you think, the more powerful your thought, you can harness energy from the cosmos, from the earth, from rocks, from crystals, everything God gave us as a gift, but we're not using it. So all we are confined to is little narrow tunnel vision. And in this tunnel vision, we start um, eating each other's flesh. See, backbiting. And that's due to the lack of love that we have for each other. So in bringing my talk to a close, I want to show you how the Holy Quran brings us right up to what is happening right now. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan said during the Savior's Day event and since that he was going to take a four-month sabbatical, is that right? A four-month leave. Where do we find that in scripture? Do you think you can find that in scripture? If you open to the ninth surah, you will read that everyone was put on alert with this warning and with this ultimatum that after four months, that if the hypocrites did not cease in their mischief making, and consistently broke their treaty agreements and their covenants that Allah himself would strike terror into the hearts of all of the opponents. And when I say hypocrites, I'm referring to those inside and outside, yeah. wherever they are. Yeah. Ultimately, this instruction from the ninth surah, when Muhammad the prophet Ibn Abdullah received the revelation, he sent his caliph Ali out 
to the congregation, out to the people, during the time of the gathering of the pilgrimage. And the first 13 verses were read out to them. And that is the only surah, brothers and sisters, that does not have that opening bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. There's a lot of scholarship that is involved in that nine surah. And very recently, I learned something more, but I cannot reveal it right now. I have to hold it back until the proper time. But if you count 19 surahs later, you run into the 27th surah. And the 27th surah takes up the study of Solomon and the establishment of the kingdom, and how he used the jinn, the men, and the birds as part of his strategy. So many people, as he read to us in the letter during Savior's Day, his prayer and his hope is that we don't get confused and that we don't misunderstand the moves that he's taking yes, to unite us to our brothers and sisters in the East. Is that right? Yes. This is very important. That's right. If you study the little documented history that we're given on Jesus, a time of trouble that has never been on earth before came. And in the clouds, which are the signs of war, a way had been made for our nation, for our people to unite with our brothers and sisters in the East. And when I see the, say the East, I'm talking generally about anything east of Europe yes, and America That's right. and around the world. That's right. And when the Honorable Minister Farrakhan launched the Third World Friendship Tour, in spite of what we already now know, that his body was fighting to ward off the prostate cancer with 238 radiated seeds. Isn't that something? And with hormonal treatments, he was experiencing sweats. And, but his strength never seemed to be abated. Grueling, grueling circumstances from climates as sub-zero like Siberia and Dagestan and Russia to hot, sweltering climates like Mali and Timbuktu in West Africa. And I mean changes that went, one day we'd be in a hot climate, on a plane, and in a cold climate. So this is a miracle man. God is making him a miracle man to prove and show forth his power. So as he traveled, he was trying to make a link for you and I. And we were sitting back home. Why does he have to go all around the world? Why isn't he here pampering us? We need a babysitter. Well, we don't have a babysitter right now. We don't have anyone to pamper us now. We're going to have to do some work right now. The history tells us we're very critically close to the ending of a cycle in the history of Islam. The new century will be the century of Islam. But what Islam? It will be the new Islam. And I know that our scholars and scientists of the Islamic world have to bear witness that they have exhausted the wisdom of the Hadith. They have exhausted the wisdom of the history of the Prophet because he told them very clearly he did not know what would be done with him or with anybody else. But he knew that there was going to be one coming that would be born in the line of his own genealogy. And that one, brothers and sisters, is the one that came to you and I from the holy city of Mecca, yes. Mekdi, 
Master Farad Muhammad. And any one of them who rejects the miracle of our resurrection from such a dead, carnivorous, criminal state of mind, if they reject, it's not because they're trying to argue against our knowledge of what we know is true. It is because deep down inside, there's a little resentment. There's a little jealousy. There's a little envy. Because they thought that that one would pop up among them. But not go to a dead people that everybody has rejected and despised. But yet in that is the fulfillment of the prophecy. So my brothers and sisters, if we knew our value, if we knew our power, we would be not super fly. We would be superman, superwoman, wonder man, wonder woman. This nation is not one man or one woman. This nation is all of our 44 million black people in America. And when we come <coughs> to our power and to our knowledge, we will defeat Satan and his work. Brothers and sisters, go along with me just a one step further. In that 27th surah, right after the 44th verse, that speaks about the conversion of a people called Sheba or Saba, the people of the Queen of Sheba. If you research that word, it takes you back to the Abasha tribe. Abasha tribe origin from Ethiopia, Africa. And when the conversion of this branch of people took place, immediately after this joining of the lost and found members of the tribe of Shabazz, then there was a death plot. And the death plot comes under the history of Sali and the slave of the she camel. When you look at our studies of the supreme wisdom, you will find that the hypocrites decided that they would rise up and take the life of the servant of God. When they rose up to take the life of the servant, it was due to envy and jealousy, not over his position so much, but they were greedy and they wanted to take what they considered to be the material goods of this world though they had not mastered the spiritual goods. And in our study, we are told that mastering the spiritual keys automatically opens up the treasures of the heavens and the earth. So a base, low moral man or woman cannot receive any benefits for himself. That one has shut off the power of God to give to you the openings of the treasures of the heavens and the earth. And if you think to destroy the very man who is the beneficiary for us, how in the world could you want chump change? That's right. What comes into the coffers of the nation of Islam is chump change. That's, right. That's just enough to keep the lights on, That's right. the overhead. That is nothing to want to fight over. That is so silly. foolish. That is why the call now of the laboring board in Chicago, Illinois, holding first a press conference on the 19th of March. You think that's a coincidence? Then a call out to all the believers in the hookup across the nation on the 19th again. And then I heard that Mr. Clinton, I'm sorry, President Clinton 
called a press conference on the 19th. And I learned in Chicago that he had timed his press conference to correspond almost to the time that we had our press conference in Chicago. But then he changed his mind. It would have been too much heat at that time. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, Islam is pregnant with wisdom. That's right. The teachings that you get here, you will never get any place right. on this world. I don't care how high born scholars. I don't care what high born scholar you may worship or look to or look up to. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, everybody is going to have to come by this teaching before it's over. Why? Because it's all truth. It is not mixed and tampered with. It is pure teaching that you receive here. And you know, brothers and sisters, we don't know what to expect truly in the year 2000. But the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has given us an agenda that takes us through the year 2000. The gathering of all of our families, the remarriage ceremony of 10,000, the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca with 10,000. Do you know that that's the fulfillment of prophecy? We had to give a picture on the Western side of what was fulfilled in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So that when the scholars would come and they would question us, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we would have had to go through the book, the Holy Quran, and go through the history of the Prophet Muhammad in order to prove that we are the scale, we are the balance, we are that prophecy that the sun of Islam would rise in the West. So the West has to paint a picture to That's look right. back to the East. That's right. So that the East will see us and they will say, my goodness, they are fulfilling and walking in every step right. of the prophet. <laughs> so it was Muhammad who was stopped with 1400, they say, followers outside of Mecca, as he went to make his pilgrimage, he was stopped by the people of Medina. And they formed what we call in the history, the Hudabaya truce. It was an uncomfortable kind of truce because there were some disadvantages that some of the followers of the prophet didn't want to go along with. But they ultimately settled to go along with this truce. This truce of Hudabaya opened up the missionary work of the Muslims so that all people could finally hear without hostilities, without fighting, without war. They had an opportunity to hear the beautiful teachings of the Holy Quran. And this is the time now that is knocking on our doors. It is our time before the greater pilgrimage to do the work of Muhammad. All of us were given the name of Muhammad, right? We have no distinction, right? We're only distinguished by our work, not by our personalities. Whatever work we do, it is honored by the Father. Now, look at this. This Hudabaya truce lasted approximately one or two years. And following that, the completion of the history of the prophet was like we have it in our lessons, which says that we would have to take, and this is going to be a hard one, and I hope nobody gets mixed up. We would have to take four devil's heads. <laughs> and if we would take these four devil's heads, we were promised a lapel, a button, to wear in the lapel of our coat and a free transportation to the holy city Mecca to see Brother Muhammad. So I was thinking about that. I said, to see Brother Muhammad. And the Honorable Minister Farrakhan is the only man 
in this century who is talking about taking 10,000, is that true? Ooh, that's right, right. <laughs> Followers over to the holy city of Mecca to receive a blessing that at this moment, we don't know what that blessing is really going to be, do we? That's right. But in our lessons, it says to see brother Muhammad. So let's just leave that in our heads and work hard so we can see <laughs> brother Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> so let us rejoice, brothers and sisters. Let us get busy on all the programs that the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has given to us so that we may be fruitful and multiply. The Exodus program, don't let it die. Don't be like the mumbling groups that went out with Moses and they got troubled and in their spirit, cantankerous in their spirit and they wanted the good things of life, and they didn't want to go out and soldier and be good, uh, righteous followers. They didn't want to obey, even though miracles were being shown to them right in their face every day. Let us not be like those people. Let us write a new history. So if in the next two years, chronologically speaking, we enter into the year 2000, we complete the family gathering, in Washington, D.C., we have the marriage ceremonies, we complete the Hajj, then what is left? We end, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the old Muhammad's history, and we begin our preparation for the new. So the more disciplined we are in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the longer we will be able to live the longer we will be able to see the new in this generation coming in and taking the place of this old degenerate mind and old degenerate civilization. Yes. I promised that I was going to tell you something about the, the Bible too. So if in the book of Revelation, which is the last book, we see <clears throat> or hear these words. It says, okay, this is chapter one, verse seven. It would be like Reverend Pisces to it. <laughs> but we have a little bit more. We have a Bible in one hand, a Quran. That's right. <laughs> Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also who pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen i am alpha and omega the beginning and the ending saith the lord who is and who was and who is to come the almighty that's our history, brothers and sisters. When we're talking about Master Farad Muhammad, when we're talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and now the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, they have that kind of juice, that kind of power. And if we had a longer time, we'd talk about that power and that juice. Because America is studying that power and that juice. While we are making mockery of that power and that juice. Finally, it appeared in the fifth chapter when one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth unto all the earth. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Yeah. This is happening, brothers and sisters, yeah. right now, yeah. while we speak. We have got the juice. We have got the power. 
And we know that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has got these two men giving him the juice and giving him the power that he can overcome death. And we have been given the juice and the power to overcome death. Dying doesn't mean anything. Because there's something else that we will soon come into the knowledge of. It says, he who seeks to save his life will lose it. Is that right? And he who loses his life will save it. Is that right? So be happy, Muslims, Christians, Hebrews, Buddhists, whatever. It doesn't matter. We are family. And we're going to stand up against Satan's world until we knock out its brain. Yes. Okay. Salam alaikum. All praises due to Allah. Come on, brothers and sisters. Let's show love to Sister Mother Tanera Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That only means God is the greatest. Let's give her another round of applause. All praises be to Allah. Beautiful teachings. All praises due to Allah. Did you enjoy yourselves today, brothers and sisters? All praises due to Allah. Brothers and sisters, a couple of questions we want to ask to the community. But before we do that, certainly to those of you who will be watching this, via television. This is the first, and God's hand is all in what we're doing today. We was not aware to the last minute that our mother was coming out west. And I don't know any way befitting to start off this series, which we hope will be a series of dialogue between Muslims and Christians, particularly black Muslims and black Christians. Is that right? So our mother, who have started off because we was going to do nine weeks of a series which we will defend. Master Farad Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and their witness, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So God has blessed us that she now have started that series. So this Thursday, <laughs> Channel 39 at 9 o'clock p.m. Her lecture will be seen in Inglewood and in the city of Los Angeles. So let's give another hand to Almighty God for blessing us with Mother Tainetta today. All praise is due to Allah. I want to thank Almighty God for the film crew, a brother who, um, out of his own pocket, and I mean from his own staff, they brought their cameras in today to begin to give us a platform that we have never had, I don't believe in the history of Los Angeles, a platform where people can sit at home in their living room and hear the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I wanna thank Brother Curtis Butler, Brother Ali Walk, Brother uh, Rudy Green, we have Brother Mike Jaron, and our own Sister Fabre Muhammad, Brother Lemuel Muhammad, Brother Robert Muhammad, and Brother Kenneth Muhammad, the great camera crew. Let's give them a round of applause for the wonderful job that they have done. All praises are due to Allah. We want to thank the Los Angeles Times because we were certainly baffled. Normally they give us negative press, but Almighty God have blessed us with one of the three essentials that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been teaching us that every people need that is food clothing and shelter so through the visions of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and when we saw the black farmers in trouble we have our own farm in Georgia so the honorable Louis Farrakhan through his vision said we must go to those black farmers and begin to help them so I want to for the brothers to bring the tables so that the TV cameras can get this view. We have developed what is called your farmer's market. And this is the food. I won't bring it up. Bring it up here. I know it's heavy. But before we do that, how many of you are here with us for your first time? Would you raise your hand? 
all of our first time guests. Raise your hand, it's okay. It's okay, all praise is due to Allah. Beautiful. How many of you, whether you've been here one, two, dozen, a hundred times, how many of you believe what you heard today to be the truth and good for oppressed people? Give yourself a round of applause. Then we thank Allah for using Mother Tanetta. Now, more importantly, how many of you, if you believe what you heard to be the truth, how many of you are now ready and willing to stand up on that truth and get with the bold leadership of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan and help us go after all oppressed people? If you're willing to do that, stand up right now. If you want to learn more and get with that truth, stand up. Brother stood up and raised his hand. Anybody else? Look, my sister stood up, another brother. You might as well stand up today. Muslims and Christians, let's unite. Anybody else that want to stand up? Come on, black woman, stand up if you want to learn more. Stand up, black man, if you want to learn more. We got another one that stood up. Got another one that stood up. Stand up if you want to learn more about yourself. Stand up. Bring brothers, bring those brothers down, please. Bring my sister, but we're not finished. I know somebody is sitting here seat, man, I kind of want to do it. Come on and do it if God is giving you the feeling. Come on. You don't have to go through no special ceremony. All praise is due to a lot. Anybody else want to stand up and join on? Is there anyone else? Let's not let God teaching coming through Mother Tanetta go in vain. You may not have another chance to stand up, brothers and sisters. Let's get with the bold and brilliant leadership of a black man that is walking in the footsteps of Jesus, walking in the footsteps of Moses, walking in the footsteps of Muhammad. Is that right? Anybody else want to stand up? Anybody else? Come on and stand up. I feel it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All praises due to Allah. Let's give a hand to those who have stood. Now, all praises due to Allah. I would like to, uh, on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, if he was here, I know that he would want to come down and shake the hands of the people of God. We don't shake their hand to make ourselves feel like we are all of that, but we are taught that whenever you look at black people and oppressed people, and people of color anywhere in the world, when you look into their faces, you're looking at God. Is that right? We have to be careful when we entertain in our people because we don't know which of them may be that mighty angel that will help to blow this trumpet. So I would ask Mother Tanetta, if she will, if she would shake the hands of our sisters who have come and to the brothers who have come, I will shake your hands. Okay, let's give Mother Tanetta a hand as she come forward. Ma'am, I'm sorry, in your name? Sister Charla Lee? Charlotte? Charlene, help me. Mrs. Lee, right? <laughs> Praise be to your life. That southern tongue won't let me say words right. Mother Tanetta, I think you. Yes, ma'am. She, uh, Mother Tynetta said, uh, she's a doctor. Is that right? Mother Tynetta, brother saying, whoo, look at it, he's excited. This is one of our great doctors. And Mother Tynetta says she's on the cutting edge in the health field. And she have stood up because she want to learn more and join on with the bold and brilliant leadership. This is our doctor. She's our doctor. Is that right? Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you, do you accept Dr. Lee? Yes, Will you help us to teach her everything you know that's good? Yes, and if she can teach you something, will you listen to her? Yes, do you accept her the way she is today? Yes, will you help her to become the woman that God would like for her to be? Yes, Brothers, will you respect her? Yes, will you help protect her? Yes, will you lift her? Yes, will you give a life for her? Yes, will you take a life for her? Sisters, do you respect your sister? 
All praises due to Allah. Then welcome, Dr. Lee, to the nation of Islam. If you would go with that sister right there, she just want to get your name. Let's give Dr. Lee another round of applause. All praises due to Allah. Your name, ma'am? Sister Cavania Adams. Welcome, Sister Cavania. This is Mother Tanetta. This is Sister Cavania, our beautiful sister. And I want to ask you a couple of questions. Do you accept her? Yes, sir. Will you teach her everything you know? Yes, sir. Will you respect her? Yes, sir. Will you help to uplift her? Yes, sir. Sisters, do you accept her the way she is today? Will you help her to become the woman that God would like for her to be? She's going to get hugged by everybody before she get out of here. You're going to say something positive to her. You're not going to say nothing negative. Is that right? Brothers, will you respect her? Yes, sir. Will you protect her? Yes, sir. Will you give your life for her? Yes, will you take the life for her? Yes, then can I declare her belonging to God yes, and the nation? Yes, All praises. Welcome to the nation of Islam, dear sister. And that sister will shake your hand. All praises due to a lot. Bring the brothers over. Let's give a hand to Mother Tynetta, to the mighty men of God. How you doing, big brother? Your name, sir? Chris. Brother Chris out of Pasadena. Yes. Beautiful. Minister Charles, this is one of his fish. Is that right? Man, God's going to put a star on your crown, Minister Charles. Yes. This is Brother Chris. Do we accept Brother Chris? Yes, Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Do you accept him the way he is today? Man, he's a tall brother. I'm glad I'm on his side. Big brother, are you about six? Six three? Beautiful pudding face, brother. Now, let me ask you a question, black men and women. Do you accept him the way he is today? Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? What if he was hungry and you had a pot of bean soup because a bowl would help him? How much of that pot could he get? Welcome to the nation of Islam, Brother Chris. Give this black man a hand as he go into the hands of Brother Sabah. How you doing there, brother? Your name, sir? Muhammad. Brother Muhammad. Beautiful, Brother Muhammad. Do we accept Brother Muhammad? Yes, sir. Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Yes, and if he knows something can teach, will you listen? Yes, Do you accept him the way he is? Yes, sir. And will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? And if you had a bowl of bean soup and he was hungry, how much of it could he get? Yes, Welcome, Brother Muhammad, to the nation of Islam. Give him a round of applause as he go into the... How you doing, dear brother? Your name, sir? Malik. Brother Malik? This is Brother Malik. These are the children of those who was taught, I mean, with a name like Malik, who came teaching those kind of names. Master Farad Muhammad. We didn't know nothing about no Malik or no Jamil or no nothing, did we? We didn't know nothing about no five percenters or no one percenter. All of that came at the heels of Master Farad Muhammad. Do you accept Brother Malik? Yes, Will you teach him everything you know that's good? Yes, Do you accept him the way he is? Yes, Will you help him to become the man that God would like for him to be? Yes, then welcome to the nation of Islam.
to the great commercial. Let me show you what God, through the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar Visions, have blessed us to be able to do for all people. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, in our co-op, we are now getting just as many Caucasian members as we do have black and brown. Because they know Firecon go get the best of products, is that right? So we're going to break open the box. Food coming to you directly from your farmer's market. In the box, of course, is a final call newspaper. All praise is due to Allah. In the box, we have Philadelphia cream cheese. You have a dozen of eggs. We have onions, fresh onions, straight from the farm. You don't have to worry about what rap is giving you because they ain't giving you nothing. They're giving you garbage. They're giving you doo-doo food. But Muhammad gives you the best. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan and his followers, we promise you, brothers and sisters, that you get this food. I'm talking about this box is only $45. You get onions. You get zucchini. You get taters or potatoes but from georgia we call them taters you get onions we need onions brothers and sisters don't worry about what it do to your breath what it does to your body is better than what it do to your breath we have fresh corn we have red and yellow bell peppers i am told that these peppers fight against cancer so we should get the best that the white man have to offer. Is that right? You get eggplants. Cooked right eggplant tastes like hamburgers. You get romaine lettuce. You get broccoli. You get spinach. You get cauliflower. You get carrots. Good for the eyes. You get grapes. You get fresh strawberries or strawberries is that right you get oranges you get tomatoes if you're from georgia tomatoes you get three cantaloupes black man like cantaloupes is that right three large cantaloupes in the weeks that we don't have cantaloupes we give at least a 15 or 20 pound watermelon you get a half a gallon of orange juice, a gallon of milk. This milk comes from cows that have not been treated with hormones or steroid shots. The best that the white man has to offer. That ain't all. You get nation's own honey. You get uh, pastas, different types of pastas. You get cream of wheat. You get salt. You get Navy beans, you can live forever eating navy beans, is that right? You get small red beans, you get rice, you get tomato paste and tomato sauce and more tomato paste. Where the cereal? We get a box of cereals too. Where my cereals, man? All for the low cost of $45. And for 10 extra dollars, look at how much meat you get for 10 extra dollars. You get a variety pack of chicken, kosher chicken, the best that the white man have to offer, have not been treated with steroids or hormones, a variety pack of chicken. Good God Almighty. Tyrannosaurus turkey legs. You can knock somebody out with these big legs here. You get mild.